Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog Life from the Viola section.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today I'm going to be sharing a few basic tips on how to take care of your new violin or viola. So if you are completely new to the string world, then this video is really, really going to help you keep your instrument in good condition and know how to take care of it, which is very, very important. So first I'm going to show you how I unpack and pack my violin. So let's go check that out. So here is my violin in its case. And when you get the case, you'll open it up, of course, to reveal your instrument. So it's usually very good to keep a cloth on top of your instrument just to keep it very safe and protected in case a bow falls out and would hit the instrument while you're walking somewhere. So I like to use my cleaning cloth on top of my violin to keep it safe. For my viola, I do have a really nice silk bag that I keep it in. Keeps it very safe and it keeps it protected. If I go outside in bad weather with my viola, it keeps it super safe from the wood expanding or contracting. Let's get out the bow first. So I have two bows in here. This is a backup bow, but this is the one that I usually use. So just turn this little knob and here is the bow. The bow here should be pretty loose. We want to keep it loose when it is in the case or when we're not playing the violin, just because it helps keep everything safe and protected. Once we get it out though, we can start to tighten it like this, turning the screw at the bottom of the bow to the right and the hair will tighten. I like to have mine right about like this. Next, we'll probably want to put some rosin on our bow. So here is a little compartment. In my case, a lot of cases have small little compartments in them. And here is my rosin. I recently just broke my rosin during a lesson and it had been in a beautiful, perfect cake for years, but now it's a little bit messed up. Still mostly a cake though. If you have new rosin, it's probably shiny. If it looks shiny, kind of like jello maybe. Um, you want to take something sharp like scissors or a knife. If you're under 18, get an adult to do it for you. But you want to basically scrape the rosin to create scratches in it so that the rosin turns into dust on the bow hair. Otherwise, nothing is going to grab onto the bow hair. So I did it here to show a student um, a couple days ago and it made a difference on this edge of the rosin. But you can see on the side of the rosin that I do use, it's a bit hazy, which means that it is turning to dust when it touches the bow hair, which is what we want. The rosin provides a sticky surface on the bow hair for the friction that we need when we put it against the strings to make a sound. So to put on rosin, I hold the bow like I do when I play the violin, and we rub it back and forth. Make sure you get all parts of the bow hair. And if this is your first time ever putting rosin on a bow, you will probably need tons and tons and tons of rosin, like way more than you ever think you'd need. Because if your bow has never been rosined before, it needs to build up a lot of that dust and stickiness. If there's nothing built up, you're gonna have to build it up yourself and it takes a very, very long time to do that. So that's enough rosin for me because I've been playing on this bow for a while. So let's talk about the violin itself. So I'm just gonna move my cloth and it should be buckled in around the neck of the violin. It's usually just Velcro, at least in all of the cases that I've had. So we can lift our violin out and in this little part where the neck sits is where I keep my shoulder rest. The shoulder rest goes on the back of the violin and it helps make it a little comfier to sit the violin against your body. So this is my shoulder rest. I use a Kuhn shoulder rest for the violin and I use an Everest for the viola. Overall, I prefer the Everest, but the Kuhn works pretty well for the violin, so I'm still using it. So how I put this on the violin, I hold it upright so that the logo on the inside is facing up so someone could read it. I hold my violin the same way, right side up. I press it against my body. Put the little feet of the shoulder rest against the rib on the outside and make it basically level with the floor straight across okay so the shoulder rest is on 
bow is tightened. And next thing to do is make sure you're in tune and then you can play. So when you are done playing, you want to either put your violin on a stand like I do or put it back in the case like if you just went to a lesson and you're coming back home. So first thing we're going to do is loosen up the bow hair. I'm just unscrewing this the opposite way that we did before, so to the left. And then what I like to do before I put it away is to grab my cleaning cloth. This is just a microfiber cloth that I got at a car show. If they're cheap, you can get them anywhere. And I kind of weave it around the stick and get off any excess rosin that made its way onto the stick just to keep everything nicely protected. Then in our case, the tip of the bow goes in this end and the frog goes around here. At least that's how I do it. Make sure none of the bow hair gets caught and then boop, it's gonna stay in place. First thing I do on the violin is take my shoulder rest off. This is a collapsible shoulder rest, so the feet go like that and I stick it in my case. Next, I want to take off all of the rosin that got on my instrument. If you leave too much rosin on the wood of your instrument, it can mess up the varnish. It can just completely erode it. And that's, that's gonna be some costly repairs. So what I do is I take my cleaning cloth. First, I rub it on the strings like this. And then just kind of weave it between the strings and the fingerboard to clean off the fingerboard. And then underneath the fingerboard. That's just kind of my routine. Sometimes if I'm, if I have the time, I'll get in between the feet of the bridge and I'll even go underneath the tailpiece and the chin rest just to get it really cleaned off. It's always good to just wipe your rosin down and I've found that making it a habit after every time I play just really helps keep my instrument in a good condition. So now we'll put away the violin. We just sit it in here. Most cases are molded so that you know exactly where the violin goes. Sit it down like that, and then strap it in. And I like to put my cloth right on top to protect it in case a bow falls and gets loose. So that's how you put your violin or viola away. And of course, remember to zip up the case. I've had a few times where um, I've just forgotten to zip up the case and Good thing the instrument was strapped in. All right, and now I am back to show you some other basic care tips on my viola. So every string instrument has a bridge. It's this vertical piece of wood that holds up the strings. This is held in place by the tension of the strings. So if you loosen all four strings at once, the bridge is going to fall. And in the very inside of the instrument, there's a pillar that stands straight up called the sound post. All of the sound vibrates off of the sound post. And when the bridge collapses, it takes off so much tension on the top of the instrument that sometimes the sound post will fall. So you wanna be sure to only tune one string at a time. Never loosen all four strings, especially if you're changing your strings, only remove one string at a time. If you need to change your strings, go ahead and watch my video all about that. It'll be linked in the eye above. So sometimes if we're making big tuning adjustments, particularly making the strings sharper or tighter, the bridge will tend to go this way towards the pegs. We don't want that to happen. So, so when you're tuning it, if you notice that it's starting to move, you can just apply a tiny, tiny bit of pressure to get the bridge to go the other way. But if you're completely new at the violin, show it to your teacher and your teacher will show you exactly what to do. A common tuning problem that I find all of my students struggle with is getting the pegs to actually stay in place. So the pegs are wedge shaped. So this side of the peg is fatter than this end. This end is skinnier. So the further we wedge it in, or for the pegs on the left, the further we wedge it in that way, the better seal we're going to get and the better the peg will stay in place. So as you tune, I'll do this with my C string. As you tune, you want to push in this way, or if it's one of these strings, push in that way, so that the fatter part of the peg is deeper in the wood so that it'll actually stay. Another tip with tuning, never tune your instrument sharper than it needs to go just because that puts extra tension on the strings that we really don't need and they'll be more likely to break. 
always move your turning pegs very slowly because the faster we turn them, the more kind of agitated the string will get and the more likely it is that it'll snap and break. Always be careful with your higher two strings if you're on a viola, D and A, really just the A string, or if you're on the violin, the E string, sometimes the A string. The E string is the string that is always the most likely to break because it is the thinnest of all strings. So always be very careful and go very slowly when you're tuning an E string or on the viola, just be careful with your A string too, just to be safe. Also, just a general care tip for your string instrument. You don't want to touch the varnish of the instrument too much. The oils from our skin, especially if your hands are dirty, try to always touch your instrument with clean hands. Just a good rule of thumb for anything in life. Wash your hands, keep your fingers clean. Everything works a little nicer when you do that. So try to avoid touching the body of your instrument. This can, um, just wear away the varnish and the staining too. So I know a couple people who will always hold their instrument like this and you can see like a patch of just lighter stain on their instrument right here from where their hand always touches the instrument because the oils in their hand have always eroded it. And you can even see in mine, there's a little bit on this edge where sometimes my hand will go over when I play like this it's a little eroded there. So just something to be aware of. Another really basic tip is to just make sure you have enough room around you when you practice or in orchestra rehearsals. There have been so many times where I'm in a small cramped space, whether that's practicing by myself or if it's a large orchestra rehearsal and everybody is tightly packed together, always just make a test with your bow, with your instrument as far out as you think you might stretch so that you definitely have enough room and you're not gonna bump things on a wall or hit someone. <laughs> I have gotten someone else's um, scroll stuck in my hair one time. That was not fun, that was actually really scary. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we wanna try to avoid that. Just make sure you have a nice bubble of space around you, like social distance between other players or walls or anything, and then you should have enough room to play your instrument. Another general tip that you might have heard from a teacher is not to touch your bow hair. It's not a huge, huge deal, but the oils from our fingers will get the bow hair dirty and you'll need to get a rehair a little sooner than you might if you don't touch the bow hair. So try to avoid touching it, only touch rods into it and strings. So those are a few basic tips to take care of your violin or viola. It's very important to take good care of it because these are delicate objects and they're kind of like humans where they're very temperamental with temperature and humidity and environment, lots of different things. So we want to take very good care of it so that it can last for a long time. Instruments usually get a better sound after like five or more years and we have string instruments all the way back from the 1700s that still play beautifully. So your string instrument can last a very, very long time and it can even sound better over time. So that's one of the reasons why we want to take good care of it. Also because repairs are expensive and they take time, time away from your instrument where you could be practicing and playing. So I hope these tips were helpful for you. If they were, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern time. Thanks for watching.